top of the show. To start off, let's go to social media. Twitter and Facebook both took action against the campaign for President Trump on August 5th over the posting of false information in campaign ads. So both posts claimed falsely that children were, quote, almost immune from COVID-19. Looking at the responses, let's start with Facebook, which has been pretty reticent to take any action when it comes to political speech, regardless of the veracity of the claims in the posts. However, they removed the video from the page after concluding that it was false information, replacing it with a, this content isn't available now message. Now this perhaps coincidentally comes on the heels of a letter that was sent to Facebook from 20 different state attorneys general, which calls on the social media platform to do better in preventing messages of hate, bias, and disinformation from spreading, and they need Need to do more to help users who are facing online abuse. So those letters were sent out, this response happened, maybe it's a coincidence, who knows. Twitter, however, has been taking a more proactive response to misinformation in general, and for this one actually hid the Trump campaign's post about COVID-19 and then wouldn't allow it to tweet again until the post was deleted. So with the election coming up very soon, it's about three months, we think we're gonna see more and more pressure on social media platforms to contain the spread of false information. And uh, if you wanna read more about that, you can go to Digital Trends. Dot com. Continuing on here with some trending news, what would it be talking about social media without going to TikTok? So here it is. TikTok has announced they are taking their first steps into the world of streaming television with the launch of an app for Amazon Fire TV. It's going to be called More on TikTok, and it will feature curated videos longer than the maximum 60-second clips you can get on the mobile app. So the app will feature two new categories. One of them is called in the studio, which will feature more in-depth interviews with celebrity TikTok stars like Grimes and other people like that. And the other new category is called This Is TikTok. And that one will showcase everyday creators uh, talking about what they do on the platform and how they do it. Now, this doesn't mean that you're going to get to upload anything to the app. So at the launch, it's gonna be for viewing only. It will be free and it will be without ads. So this is available today in the US and it comes just in time for the debut of The Weekend Experience, which features The Weekend, and it'll be a live, interactive, and immersive XR event on TikTok on August 7th. So again, this is the launch of an app on Amazon Fire TV. So that's where it's going to first in the United States, and it's gonna be called More on TikTok. So the first kind of step into longer form videos We'll see how that all works out, but nonetheless, TikTok making moves despite all the pressure on them. You can read more about it at digitaltrends.com. The home delivery competition is pretty fierce right now, and whether it has to do with food and restaurant deliveries or home shopping, and DoorDash just upped their offerings by introducing Dashmart. So Dashmart is the new delivery option from them that's basically a digital convenience store. So each location will have about 2,000 items to choose from, like meals, snacks, household essentials, and even spices and sauces. To that end, what they were talking about is, say you have a favorite hot sauce from a restaurant that you wanna get, they can go pick that up and have it delivered to you within 30 minutes. So they're going for that kind of local delivery stuff, but also convenience stores. So DoorDash right now is sitting in first place as far as the size in the US when it comes to restaurant delivery. They're ahead of Uber Eats and Grubhub, which was just recently purchased by Just Takeaway from Europe. But the grocery delivery market is still expanding as everyone is still at home. So there's a huge potential for this kind of service, you know, even going against Postmates and Amazon and Walmart. So this service, Dash Mart, is only going to eight different cities in the U.S. to start with. It's Chicago, Minneapolis, Dallas, Salt Lake City, the greater Phoenix area, Redwood City, California, and Cincinnati and Columbus. So that's where it's starting, but expect that to start expanding as it goes. Uh, definitely another option, another offering from them. So uh, read more about it at digitaltrends.com. And finally, in trending news, this is coming from, according to a report from The Insider, the BioVisor hazmat suit has begun shipping to some of its nearly 2,000 backers. So this is something you may see in public soon. So here is what it is. This campaign launched from Visor Technologies. They're from Toronto. It launched back in early May when you saw a bunch of different campaigns along these lines of creating masks for people to use out in public. Now, this is a complete covering of its reaper torso. It claims to filter out pathogens and protect against droplets. Here's what it's got. It's got an anti-fogging face neoprene and vinyl. It's got an N95 air filter that it says lasts up to 12 hours. It's got fans in it that bring air in and purifies it and then also pressurizes it so it's always pushing air out. So when you breathe or cough, it does push that out. It also has, it has adjustable straps. It's got, uh, it's got an adult size and a child size. So there's two different sizes that you can order. And it's also got straps to attach hand sanitizer to it, 
It's got a USB port on it, so you can actually charge the battery pack, and the whole thing weighs about three pounds. Now, if you remember, way back in May, so, so long ago, uh, there were a lot of these campaigns that came out, but this one certainly took off. It has about $300,000, I believe, in backing, and uh, people have really wanted these, and this is one that's going to be coming out. So how do you feel about this? I know we're broadcasting live as well as uh, recording this news, but is this something that you would wear in public? Now, in theory, it's going to keep you pretty safe. Um, they also uh, really emphasize it for public transportation or maybe taking a flight and wearing this thing. There's some other examples that have been out there of full body suits. This one is just kind of an upper body suit, but still at the same time, something that they are pushing out. So these things you can still pre-order. They're at 250 bucks and you can order them off of their website. But again, this is what it's called. So it's the BioVisor Hazmat Suit and they got about 2000 backers on it. And that's one coming out of Toronto. And I think we're going to probably see a boom in these things because of the fact that there are so many people looking for different ways to protect themselves when they're out in public. So the uh, BioVisor, uh, again, costs 250 bucks, and you can still order them from the website. Take a look at that at digitaltrends.com.